and I'm here on behalf of MakerDAO, one of the oldest and most ambitious projects in all of Ethereum that has come together to create DAI, the first fully decentralized stablecoin on Ethereum. Now, for those of you who don't know, a stablecoin is a cryptocurrency that has low volatility relative to fiat currency, making it more useful as a form of digital money. Now, why is it more useful? Why do we need a stablecoin? Well, when considering cryptocurrency use in the real economy, the number one mainstream criticism is their insane volatility. There are many reasons for this volatility, but chief among them is the fact that Bitcoin, Ether, and most popular cryptocurrencies have a fixed supply. And if price is the meeting point of supply and demand, then variable demand will always cause variable price in the face of fixed supply. We see this today in gold, for example. One of the most liquid markets on the planet that still experiences daily price volatility because of its relatively fixed supply. Now, like gold, <coughs> cryptocurrency has proven to be a very resilient store of value, steadily appreciated since their inception. But this deflationary characteristic of cryptocurrencies, particularly the fixed supply cryptocurrencies, actually harms their primary use case of money. Think about it. Why would you spend something if you knew that its purchasing power was going to increase in the future, right? Uh, many people, they hold their cryptocurrency, they have no plans of ever spending it for this reason. And this was most famously demonstrated, the reason that you want to hold on to it and not spend your cryptocurrency, it was most famously demonstrated by the two pizzas that were purchased for 10,000 bitcoins in 2010, right? Think about that. I'm sure that guy has a good sense of humor about the whole thing, but the point remains that people will remain skeptical about spending their cryptocurrency for everyday transactions as long as they expect it to significantly appreciate in value. Right? So this medium of exchange use case is sort of harmed by the deflationary tendencies of fixed supply cryptocurrencies. And it's even worse when you consider the unit of account use case, right? Deflation punishes borrowers by making their debts more difficult to pay back over time. Think about if you borrowed 100 bitcoins one year ago and you spent them to start a business. Think about how unhappy you would be now when it's time to repay that debt, right? So clearly, a stable coin is needed for mainstream adoption of cryptocurrencies. And that is where MakerDAO comes in. At its core, Maker consists of two cryptocurrencies. The first is called DAI. This is the flagship product. It is a stable coin. It has been live on Ethereum for about a month, and it is currently stable at one dollar. It is an asset-backed, hard currency. That means that every DAI coin is backed by some kind of valuable asset. And the way that this works is that the DAI stablecoin system is actually a permissionless credit system, which means that anybody in the world, anybody in this room, can take their valuable assets lock them up in the DAI stablecoin system, and issue DAI against them. Now, the stability of DAI is maintained by a system of dynamic autonomous interest rates that algorithmically adjust the incentives for using this permissionless credit system as a reaction to emergent market conditions. I can't really go into the details in this short talk, but a lot of information there. This is probably one of the deepest rabbit holes that you're going to be presented with at this conference today. The second token is called MKR. This is the administrative token, and its holders comprise a decentralized regulatory community who use token governance to make decisions about how the system should be run and operated over time. For instance, the simplest thing that they do, and at the same time the most difficult, is they make decisions about what types of assets can be locked into the system and have DAI issued against them, right? 
right? You need to make those decisions as a group. And in exchange for those services, the NKR token is used as fuel for the credit system. And it is consumed by users of the permissionless credit system when they pay fees. Uh, who uh, they burn. So the supply of MKR diminishes over time if the MKR holders do a good job of operating the system. This makes MKR a high risk, high reward, volatile asset that allows investors to gain exposure to the success or failure of the DAI stablecoin system. And if you find this talk interesting and you get really, really excited about DAI, it's very likely that you will become MKR holder, because this is the community that calls itself MakerDAO. So let's talk a little bit more about the credit system, right? So far, what I've talked about is how users take their valuable assets and they lock them in what's called a collateralized debt position, a CDP, and then issue DAI against them. Later, when they want to unlock that collateral, they simply repay the DAI that they issued, plus a fee based on how long it was outstanding. But why would somebody want to do this, right? Why would somebody lock up their assets in the system in this way? Well, the most obvious use case, and the one that we're targeting at first, is for decentralized leverage. Imagine if you took that die that you issued and you used it to make a speculative investment. If that investment was profitable, what you could do is take the, um, a portion of the investment, sell it back for die unlock your collateral and pocket the difference, right? This will seem very familiar to the traders in the room because this is the basic prospect of margin trading. But the difference with Maker is that because the entire system is made entirely out of smart contracts, the counterparty risk associated with acquiring leverage is significantly reduced because there are no human, um, there are no human custodians. And likewise, transparency is increased because it's all taking place on a public blockchain. You can go right now to our dashboard at die.nickerdive.com and see all the statistics of the system. So, I, um, as you can see in this diagram, the value of the asset actually exceeds the value of the die that's been issued against it. This is not a coincidence. It's actually a rule that is enforced by the system to ensure that die is always backed by some kind of asset, right? Because assets fluctuate. Now, if this asset, if it fluctuated up, if it appreciated in value, that's fine for a guy. It doesn't really matter. But if it fluctuated down and depreciated in value while it was locked up in a CDP, the system needs to take steps to protect itself. So what it does is it liquidates the CDP, reclaims the collateral, and sells it for the die that was issued against it to balance the books. You can think of this as a decentralized margin. And it's very important that when you use the permissionless credit system, you do not put in an asset there if you expect its value to fall over the lifetime of the position. So I talked a little bit about how DAI is going to, the DAI stablecoin is going to unlock mainstream adoption of cryptocurrencies, right? I've got a few of the most highly anticipated use cases of blockchain here on the screen, right? International remittances, supply chain financing, consumer credit, financial derivatives. Our team is currently in talks and we are making partnerships in, with other teams in all of these industries that plan on using the DAI stablecoin or the permissionless credit system at the core of their technology. You can expect a lot of exciting announcements from us in 2018. For example, here's a quote from Joey Crude, the co-founder of Hawk, one of the most highly anticipated financial derivatives in all of blockchain talking about how excited he is to use the DAI stablecoin in his prediction markets and how useful it's going to be for his customers, right? This is the first many, many announcements that we have planned for 2018. It's going to be a banner year for Megadon. So what's next? Like I said, the main use case, or I guess the most obvious use case of the DAI stablecoin system is for margin trading and use on exchanges, right? So we've got a lot of exchange integrations planned 2018, you can expect to see DAI and our uh, margin trading system appear on an exchange near you. We have very low borrowing rates, definitely the most competitive in the industry, so if you're margin trading right now, consider, consider issuing through DAI. Uh, of course, reduce systemic risk. We're trying to take the entire industry to the next stage 
of sophistication with these, uh, with these systems. And last, uh, we've got some important die stability features that we're going to release in Q2 of this year. So, and they're going to kind of make the system more scalable, and something that we can really push out into the mainstream. So, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm going to be in the uh, networking area right over there. I think we have a break right now. Please visit Maker. Oh, I could be wrong. You see, we'll say for sure. Please visit MakerDAO.com if you want to learn more. There, like I said, this is one of the deepest rabbit holes you're going to be presented with at this conference. Please look into MakerDAO.com or MakerDAO on Twitter. If you have any questions, like I said, we're in the networking area.